It is good to see that some of the major reasons why Nigerians continue to complain about the low access to justice and slow dispensation of justice are now being gradually addressed. One major area the judiciary will always point to each time Nigerians complain about those two areas is the low level of manpower in the judiciary. And of course, it is betrayed by the fact that judges are overworked. Now, there are many other factors that cause that. There is the absence of technology that can help judges perform very swiftly, and then, of course, the low manpower, very few judges to handle thousands of cases. Now, this second part, which is the number of judges in our courts, is now being gradually addressed with the appointment of more judges in our various courts. And from what the scale can uh, tell you, I think in the, before the end of the year, more such appointments will be made. Now, on the scale today, we are looking at the appointment of new set of judges for the FCT High Court. Welcome to the program. I am Femi Okewu. At the swearing-in of 11 judges appointed by the judiciary and the federal government, remember the appointment of the judiciary, uh, judicial workers is always a tripartite uh, venture. Now, at the appointment, at the swearing-in of uh, these judges, the Chief Justice of Nigeria used the opportunity to again shed light on what the duties and the conduct of judges should be like. And so let's go to the Supreme Court and see how the swelling in of the latest number of 11 judges for the FCT High Court looked like. I, Papa Shani Abubakar, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In the last three years, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has lost about 15 judges to promotion to the Court of Appeal, retirement, and even death. For a court that has the second highest docket of cases in its plate next to Lagos, the swearing in of 11 judges by the Chief Justice of Nigeria comes as a big relief. Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed called on the new judges to see their appointment as a call to national service and not an outlet for personal gains. It is now a covenant between the subscriber to the oath and his creator and the Nigerian people. You must be dispassionate and transparent in all you do as judicial officers. Justice is blind, non-discriminatory, and fair to everyone. As per view of justice and minister in the inner recess of good conscience, 
you must not look at faces, colors, creed, or race before arriving at your decision. The 1999 or the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 has amended and all other extant laws should be your vehicle to the destination of equity and fairness. All your conducts must have a bearing on the laws of our land. You must not at any time allow the dictates of uh, detractors sway your decisions. And the judges are well aware of the task ahead. As I subscribe before man and goat that will do right to all manners of persons without fear or favor, and I will stand by it. It's really good, very good, and I'm thankful to God Almighty. This is the day that the Lord has made, and indeed, I'm rejoicing and I'm glad in it. I've always wanted to be a judge. I don't like oppression. I want people to be treated properly. The judges are to immediately commence a two-month training and orientation, a program which the chief judge of the FCT High Court, Justice Ishak Bello, says will let them into the reality of their new calling. We work as brothers by virtue of the fact that nobody thinks he is an island unto himself in terms of knowledge. We make consultations and that makes us to be different. When we go there, any judge you ask to move forward and deliver a talk anywhere, he can do that to the satisfaction of his audience. And I'm glad to say that even the magistracy here have been employed to go to other jurisdictions and deliver lecture. It's because of the way we handle them. And uh, during the process of this employment, and we believe more will come from the list. The NGC had the pleasure of commending the FCT judiciary for presenting the kind of candidates that we presented and employed other jurisdictions to copy the FCT judiciary. The major tool of a judge uh, anywhere in the world is integrity. Now with your integrity, you can build other things. Idea of learning is an ongoing thing. And so now that you are here, uh, the law is presumed to be in your breast. And so you develop them out of experience uh, with the matters that um, come before you. Uh, so uh, that cannot be a problem. But the issue of integrity is paramount. It is better that one is not too intelligent but has high integrity. But if you are intelligent and integrity is not there, you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stay. So your integrity must um, be a what word. We are blessed in this judiciary. We are blessed in the sense that it is one big family, one big judicial family. So. You should look at yourself as an ambassador of the High Court of the FCT, FCT. You should also consider yourself as being privileged with the array of honorable judges that we have here in the FCT and take the best advantage of all those <clears throat> who are already judges here. Advantage in the sense that being new in this terrain, there'll be several novel matters that will come across your path. Please, when you are in doubt, do not hesitate to call on any of the senior judges that are already experienced and have been on this uh, job for quite a while. Share your thoughts with them. Think aloud with them. It is better that you are able to rub minds with those who are well experienced in this job 
than just to take the plunge and then you find yourself in a situation that you cannot more or less uh, retrieve. A simple error which could have been well avoided if you had spoken to the other honorable judges. I think this is an area that you should always tap uh, because no one has exclusive knowledge of the law. No matter how many years you have been at in this legal profession, there will always be a recondite point that you might feel much better and more confident when you are able to rob minds and you know be sure that you are put on the right track. And now they will have to continue to do their job swiftly and uh, let's hope that we begin to see the impact of these new intakes as judicial officers. Now on the scale today we're going to conclude with what we started weeks ago. There seems to be so much controversy about the role of lawyers in national development but first before they can even give an input into national development they must get themselves well sorted out now of, the, of recent the controversies uh, surrounding uh, lawyers and their association the mba has uh, left a bad a sore taste in the mouth for now let's continue to sieve out opinions from legal practitioners as to how helpful lawyers can be in national development. We take two more lawyers on this edition. Everybody has a role to play in his or her own way, depending on what he does for a living. Let me restrict myself to my practice, which is the practice of law. As a lawyer, you can make meaningful contribution to national development. First, by ensuring rule of law. What I mean by that is, by your various contributions, either as a litigation lawyer or as a solicitor, you try to uphold the tenets of the ethics of the profession. By doing that, you will see that everybody will do things the way they are supposed to be done. You can take pro bono cases. For instance, where you feel that a citizen's right has been trampled upon or is about to be trampled upon, you can take it up to ensure that the property is done at the proper time. So that is what I mean by everybody. It's everybody's responsibility. Does that mean that the contributions of the lawyer and the legal profession is only narrow to rule of law. How about general development of the nation? It's not narrow to, the, to, to rule of law. But you know, any country that does not observe rule of law, you observe rule of anarchy. Nobody wants an anarchist country. So, you see, when you observe rule of law, what is rule of law? It's doing things according to the tenets of the law. And once everybody does everything that he's supposed to do, as he ought to do it, there will be a very peaceful nation. Everything will fall in place. That is what I mean. Now, these are rules for individual lawyers. Is there any rule for the collective body of lawyers? You see, I think if you look at uh, laws, there are situations where MBA as a body has a role to play. And that they have been doing for a very long time. I've seen MBA being represented in the various constitutional conferences, making the position papers, writing either as group or some other group within the MBA, making contributions, economic contributions, social contribution, etc., etc. Of recent, you've seen lawyers making suggestions on various reforms that are ongoing into the country. That is what I mean. We make contribution at our various level. 
you, you were the one that highlighted it, that you take a pro bono case and uh, talk about it. We notice that the incursion of lawyers into public interest litigation, public interest matters, have reduced drastically in Nigeria. Well, I stand to be corrected because I'm not guided by any statistics from you. In any case, I know pro bono cases are still ongoing. I am representing some other organizations in some other cases. But you know there is confidentiality between a client and a lawyer. Not all cases you highlight and are in the purview of the public. There are some cases that have been done that are receiving the attention of a lot of lawyers on pro bono basis. Now let's expand this discussion to include the uh, judiciary, uh, which is also part of the legal uh, profession in Nigeria. Um, are they helping enough in pushing on the development of this polity? This dispensation are you talking about? Yes, dispensation the role of lawyers, the role of judges and the judiciary cannot be overemphasized. Look at all the pre-election cases. Look at the post-election cases. Look at the electoral cases. You need, one need to give quarters to the Nigerian judiciary for standing up and be firm. Look at the decisions. I think the Nigerian judiciary need to be commended. People are not looking at national development from the point of rule of law alone in Nigeria for today. They are looking at national development from infrastructural development. They are looking at national development from empowerment of the citizens. Is there any role for the legal profession in that area? Well, you see, the legal profession scope in that line, as, as, as far as it's related to infrastructure, yeah. they're talking of people in government. Yeah. And lawyer cannot award contract for road construction. But some of us do little things they can do in their own little segments. Yes. But there are lawyers in government. Are we seeing their impact? Very well. I'll give you a quick example. Look at Niger National Judicial Institute. Look at uh, the FGSC. I'm talking about lawyers in the executive arm of government. Are we seeing the impact of lawyers in the executive arm of government? If you recall, the Attorney General of the Federation is also the Minister of Justice. So most of this infrastructural development cannot happen without his input. That is to say, his contribution is beyond mere recognition. It would take us a lot, a lot, the whole day to calculate, say they have done this, they have done that. It even includes the welfare of judges, which some of our good friends call stomach infrastructure and the rest of it. So they have been trying their best. And don't forget, they only recommend most of the time. Okay. The Attorney General of States recommend to the governor. Okay. The Attorney General of Federation recommend to the President of the State Executive Council. One of the issues at the front burner of our system is governance, whether good or bad. And one of the bane of the economic epilepsy is governance. And you cannot talk of governance without talking of laws, because it is the law that breeds governance. Therefore, where to kickstart issue of good governance, you have to talk of the laws that regulate the society. Because the law regulates the economy, regulates the religious activities, and everything about life has to do with law. So that is the first point uh, of contact. And as you are aware, lawyers are the custodians of the law. They are the vicarious carriers of the role of law. Therefore, for a society to grow, the, the lawyers must be well entrenched into that society. And as it is today, I agree with you that NB, Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, is a vocal organization, professional organization in Nigeria, but it is not without its own problem. So in order to trace our roots of, truth of the problem, you have to also look at the laws we have, and they need to amend them, they need to have good laws that will assist us. When people go against the law, would you say that it is then the law to be held responsible? Impunity holds sway in 
the society. Impunity holds sway in the society because the society itself is faulty. Because the penal laws are not effect effective. Because those that are to actuate the, the laws are not on top of their game. For instance, I'll give you an example. If a lawyer breaches the code of conduct, goes against the professional ethics and his discipline, it will be a deterrent to another. But where he does it without any punishment, of course, is, is an encouragement to others to do the same. So when you see impunity, impunity tries because there is no punishment. Impunity tries because those that are supposed to punish the offenders do not take up their task. That is one of the major problems we have. What can the legal profession do about this? Now, when you talk of the legal profession, you also talk of the judiciary. Because you, there cannot be lawyers without the judges. There cannot be judges without the lawyer. Remember that the judges are first of all lawyer before they move to the bench. Therefore, there must be a synchronization between the bench and the bar. That where there is an offense, where there is an impunity, the bench, the judiciary should stand up to discipline the offender. In that way, you see that there will be less impunity. The government has a cross section of individuals in it. Yes. Among them are lawyers. Yes. Are we feeling the impact of lawyers in governance? Yes, I answer yes and also answer no. Answer yes in the sense that, for instance, when you look at the National Assembly today, you see the input of the, of the lawyers at the, in the National Assembly, you will agree that, yes, we are feeling the impact of the lawyers. But on the other hand, because of the number of the members there, you will discover that they are, they, they, their productivity is less compared to the other number. Therefore, it takes us back to what I was saying, that lawyers as carriers of the role of law must be given room to contribute their quota, especially in issue of lawmaking, because they know the good laws and the bad laws, and if given the opportunity to make the laws, I strongly believe that they'll make good laws for us, and that their impact will be felt easily. Let's look at it this way. Would it be a plus for any government if that government has a lot of lawyers in its fold? It would be, it would be positive, it would be a plus. Except where the lawyers give advice and the, and the government does not give to their advice. They are part of the government. Yes. You see, they, if they are part of the government, they are not the head. They are mere advisors. And when you advise, but your principal does not take your advice, you know you now become limited. As Attorney General, for instance, your duty is to advise the government. You have given the advice, but this, your governor or the president, as the case may be, refuse to take the advice. The, what will you do? You are in, practically incapacitated. Have you however, yes. however, you have a duty to still ensure that the advice are carried out. It's only in Nigeria you see where a public officer is not ready to resign. In other clients, in the same society, when an attorney general gives advice to the government and the president or the governor refuses to take the advice and is going contrary to his profession, he will resign. But you can't see that in Nigeria. Have you just said that the individual lawyer in the government is helpless? The, no, I, did, I didn't say they are helpless. They are making their impact. You know, it's a gradual process. It's a gradual process. And because it's gradual, you cannot expect a result, 100% result overnight. Therefore, you have to go gradually. But I'm, I, I am sure we are getting there. Now, we have been talking about the individual lawyer. Let's talk about the lawyer as a collective body, their association. What impact have we, can we see, are we expected to see, should we see uh, in governance with a collective body of lawyers? I make bold to say that NBA, even though with its own internal problem, has a voice in every government that has, has been. They have been able to stand and to speak the truth to the government in every government, in every successive government we have seen. And for that reason, I can say that NBA as a body has a voice. That is not to say that there is no room for improvement. And we are praying now that we are having a new government in NBA, 
we are also encouraging them and advising them to make strong our voice to the government. Yes, so much on the scale today. Thank you for being part of it. We shall continue to extray issues evolving from the justice sector of Nigeria and be sure to always be our guest on this program. Thank you for being part of it. I will see you again.